Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about the, at least in my opinion, best vlogging camera going into 2021. Oh, 2021 already. That sounds so unfamiliar. I'm getting old. So yeah, it's a new year. Maybe you made some New Year's resolutions. You want to start a new YouTube channel. You want to capture your family's moments. Do some vlogs. Now you want to buy a new vlogging camera. Or a good camera overall. Maybe you already have a great camera and you want a second backup B camera. I'm going to tell you which camera to buy. First thing we have to do today is pick up a new tripod from our local electronics store called Media Market here in Germany. Media Market. Media Market. Got it. Next up I'm gonna need some shoes because mine are completely wasted. Like completely wasted. Look at the sky. It's beautiful. Looking good. Okay, so it looks like I messed up a little bit. I just set up my camera right here wanting to record this video but for some reason my microphone battery is dead look at this there's not even the red light anymore normally it's off right here it's green right here and it's green right here and when it's about to get empty the green light turns red but it's not even red anymore I don't know why I've never seen it red it just suddenly appears to be empty I have this microphone since 2015 so five years and in this period of getting used I only change the battery two or three times and I use it every day. I use it on a daily basis. I don't know why it holds so long. It shouldn't, but it did and now suddenly it's empty. I'd have to get a new one or just a new battery. Anyways, I guess I will just shoot this entire video about the vlogging camera on the vlogging camera. So I guess I'm gonna change the setup from this to this camera right now. So first off, the camera we're going to talk about, it's the RX100 Mark V. And I know this is an older camera, we already have the Mark VI and the Mark VII, but I actually think for vlogging, the Mark V has some advantages over its successors. There are people, they have a dog, so cute, I want a dog, I steal there. So why not use your big camera for vlogging? I know many people do and I did it, but it's just not practical. If I wanted to get the same practicality that I have with my RX100 Mark V out of my Sony a7S II, like good audio, a tilt screen where I can see myself and a small tripod that I can use as a selfie stick or a tripod, I have to use this entire setup that you saw earlier. Like, it's just huge. Of course, we have the camera itself. We have a gorilla pod for selfie stick mode and tripod mode. We have a small HD focus screen so we can see ourselves. And we have this huge mic. But for this camera, I just have this setup. And it's so much simpler. Of course, we have a few quality trade-offs. And I think for vlogging, it's worth it, in my opinion. It's a new day, as you might can tell from my haircut. I went to the barber yesterday. Got a fresh new haircut. I also already had a look at the footage from yesterday. Maybe it wasn't the greatest idea shooting next to the biggest highway we have around here. But as you could see, the audio from this camera also holds up in pretty tough conditions. Anyways, let's talk about specs. So I filmed in there, and over there is the highway. Let's get out of here. The Sony RX100 of course features 4K video at 24 or 25 or 30 frames per second. Also a 1080p mode in 120 frames per second. And it even features a super slow motion mode with 960 frames per second, which of course reduces the image quality by quite a bit, so you can't use it in real videos if you want to shoot cinematic or high quality content. But it's a nice gimmick to have and to use for some time. On the small screen of the camera, it actually looks great, but on my 5K 27 inches iMac, it doesn't look that great. But maybe if you just watch it on a phone, you can use it very much. You can see some examples of it right here. It looks terrific. I want 960 frames per second in 4K. Please give it to me. I'll buy it. 
Also, as said earlier, it features a nice tilting screen so you can see yourself while recording and you have a very good autofocus, which you can also see in this shot I took earlier. Like, just amazingly quick autofocus. So now why I prefer the Mark V over the Mark VI and VII. Speaking of audio, the Mark V sadly does not feature an audio jack and the Mark VI doesn't as well. The Mark VII on the other hand does have an audio jack and also both Mark VI and Mark VII have a 24 to 200 mm lens, which is awesome. The Mark V only has 24 to 70, but that means it has a way better aperture. The Mark V is coming in at 1.2 to 2.8 which is amazing for low light. The Mark 6 and Mark 7 only have an aperture of 2.8 to 4.5 which is in my opinion a major trade-off and I would rather prefer a better aperture for the better low light capabilities than a wider focal range. Also my most used lens on my a7s2 is guess what a 24 to 70. It is starting to rain. I should go now. I wanted to finish this video right here but I think we have to get to a new location. I'm gonna finish it today, but I think we have to get to a new location. Also, it's getting dark. Damn, everything's playing against me. Also, while I'm packing my things, I can tell you why I think it's not that important that the Mark V does not have an audio jack. Microphones, they're cool to use. They give you better audio. But if you put a microphone every time you vlog on this small little camera, it gets bigger again, and then you could just use your big combination so as I said this small camera is for portability and if you had the opportunity to use a microphone on this camera you probably would use it more often and by not having an audio jack on the Mark V you don't get tempted to use a microphone maybe that's just me wanting to get more positive features out of the Mark V maybe not you have to decide for yourself okay packed all my things let me take my camera and we're heading to somewhere dry. Now I can just take my camera, use its portable factor and go somewhere else. Love this practicality. Wouldn't want a microphone on this one because I couldn't fit it in my pocket anymore, which is where it goes now. Okay, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just finish this video while I'm walking to my car. I don't want to take hours to find another location. It took me three hours to find this one, so I'm not gonna let me stop from this. Also, this camera has something that is pretty uncommon for a small compact camera like this. Normally only the big cameras like the C200 or cinema cameras or documentary cameras have these. But this camera has a built-in toggleable ND filter which is pretty great so you can shoot and use the wide aperture of 1.8 even in bright sunlight. More things I like about this camera, battery life is okay. I would recommend getting two to three batteries, but you can charge the camera with a simple power bank, which is pretty cool. And it has a pretty solid viewfinder that you can just stick out, stick back in. And the same applies to the little flash the camera has. Another cool feature we have is you can actually record while you're charging the camera with a power bank or even the power outlet, which gives you basically unlimited battery supply and you can record until the card is full or the camera overheats which it doesn't it does not overheat link to the power bank is also in the description as well as the camera and the tripod pretty cool combo you could put some gaffer tape around it and you're good to go <laughs> kidding i'm just kidding no cap now that i think about it let me just put it down because i need one hand free you could actually just put this tripod inside of this pocket and then, hold on, I need both my hands. Oh my god, it works. It's sitting tight. This could actually work as a good power solution. Damn, I'm a genius. No, actually, this is, this is really working. I mean, I wouldn't use it because that also destroys the portability. But, I don't know. If your battery is dead, you could use that. Also, I'm back at the loud spot again. I'm so sorry. I'm recording another video right here and I just thought about the solution so back to the other location okay so the last great point of buying a mark 5 instead of the mark 6 or mark 7 is it's of course way cheaper than the newer ones because it's an older camera and it's still at around 800 to 900 euros or dollars on the sony side but i got mine off of a use side for 480 euros i hope there are no people i don't like talking when people are around looks good battery's empty again <laughs> i'm not the biggest fan of buying used camera equipment i like my stuff new and shiny the feeling of unboxing a new product 
Oh, the lighting is really bad here, but I gotta finish the video. But for a camera that you just want to throw in your bag anyways, or in your pocket or in your trunk, I think maybe it's okay to buy a used camera. Is it really worth it spending double the amount you would spend on a used camera just for making these scratches yourself? I don't think so. Also, if it's already used, Maybe you care less about the equipment and more about the shot because you're not worried about getting scratches on your camera. And I mean mine was used, but it looks as good as new. There are a few minor scratches, but they are not that bad. And yeah, that's it. Parent the camera with this small little Manfrotto tripod, pixie set tripod. And you have a great vlogging setup. Links to the camera and to the tripod down in the description. There are affiliate links, so I get a small amount of cash if you order equipment over these links i would be very thankful and that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next video goodbye also consider subscribing goodbye <laughs>